Good evening, everybody. This is Spartan Alpha Zulu bringing you another Pokemon Wi Fi battle against Christ. Christ, I don't know. It does not matter. Looking at the teams here, I got my new team up, and this team looks pretty intimidating. I'm worried about that Tapu Lele. I do not like Tapu Lele. Uh, I don't, honestly, the only Tapu I like is Coco. He just seems more balanced. But, anyways, uh, let's get ready to rock and roll. So, without my champ, I'm feeling kind of lost here. I'm going to go ahead and start with my. Lopany, which it is a Mega Lopany, uh, Jolly Nature, Max, or uh, yeah, Jolly Nature, Max Attack, Max Speed, uh, Fake Out, High Jump Kick, Return, and Ice Punch is the move set. So your typical Smogon set that you can find on Smogon. Uh, so the the he he goes uh, he goes in with Hippodon, and I know my Mega Lopany is not going to touch this because Hippodon is just an awesome defensive wall. Um, I used to use one back in the Diamond and Pearl days, and I immediately loved it. I, I had mine specifically to do with Dragonites. Uh, anyways, I go for the Fake Out to get my free turn here, and look at that. Hippodon just shrugs it off. Uh, so I know this is not going to go anywhere, and the thing is I want Greninja to kind of come in here and just deal with this thing. But I can't bring Greninja in yet because I want that Tapu Lele dealt with. Because most Tapu Leles are either specced or scarfed. So I'm going to bring in my Heatran. And he sets up his Stealth Rocks. Uh, the reason I brought in Heatran was because I thought he was going to switch as well. But he didn't. Which, thinking about it now, I mean, he had no reason to. Because Hippodon walled Lopany all day. And he really had no reason to switch. But I'm okay with this call because I still got my Air Balloon. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go for the Will-O-Wisp. Still hoping he was going to switch. And he didn't. So I at least hurt the attack of the Hippodon, which Hippodon's attack isn't much to boast about anyway. But I'll take it. I'll, I mean, every little bit helps. He goes for the Earthquake, forgetting I'm holding an Air Balloon, and it does not affect Heatran. My Heatran is a Timid Heatran, which I'm not... I don't, I don't think you really see a lot of it. Uh, the reason I have him as Timid is just specifically to outspeed opposing Heatrans. The moveset uh, is uh, Lava Plume, Flash Cannon, Earth Power, and Will-O-Wisp. But I've been thinking about getting rid of Will-O-Wisp for Stealth Rocks. I bring in my Ferrothorn, which I don't have a lot of experience with this Pokemon. I just brought it in because Power Whip will hit the Hippodon super effectively. Um, I did end up liking Ferrothorn quite a bit. Uh, it's defensive holding Rocky Helmets with Iron Barbs. So, you know, hitting it physically where they have to touch it, it deals a crap ton of recoil damage just from those. Uh, the moveset is Leech Seed, Power Whip, Protect, and stealth rocks but i kind of want a status move on this i'm thinking either thunder wave or toxic i'm not sure where to go with that he brings hibidon back in after switching mantine out i'm going to bring in my lopany and now we're kind of just we're kind of just switching out here trying to get some freaking upper trying to get the upper hand on one another but he has the stealth rocks out so he's kind of already got me you know in a position where I, I can't be switching this much because those stealth rocks are going to slow, slowly dwindle me down. Uh, I go for the fake out again. And this time, I know it's not going to do much, but I want to see what it will do. And I can't freeze it because it's burned. But either way, I'm going to go for the ice punch. I want to see what ice punch does to this thing. And so I go in for the ice punch. And lo and behold, Hibidon just being the awesome physical wall that it is, it does deal a good amount of damage, but not enough to where I'm happy with. Look at that. He just kind of shrugged it off. So, I mean, yes, it dealt a lot, but nowhere near to put it, you know, to take it out. He's going to go in for the Earthquake, and it deals a very significant amount of damage, but that's just because, you know, Lopany's defenses are paper thin, and so are Greninja's. That's the bad thing about this team. Lopany and Greninja, they just can't take hits. So, but I ended up liking the team. I had a lot of good results with it. On showdown uh, it got me to the 1400s so I mean I was happy with that I, I prefer the 15 or 1600s but I'll, I'll take the 1400s I'm gonna switch out going in for Landorus because I want to I'm thinking maybe I can knock the leftovers off of this thing and just keep it from healing up that way but I also forgot that this freaking Pokemon no slack off which I'm very upset I'm disappointed in myself that I forgot that because I used to use a Hippodon I loved it so he slacked off on the switch to put his health back all the freaking way up. And that upset me. But I'm still going to go for the knockoff because maybe at least I can get rid of those leftovers. And as I always say, every little bit helps. Because it does. This is Pokemon. Every little bit of damage eventually, you know, helps out. He's going to switch. 
which I'm kind of okay with that. Bringing Mantine back in, and it's going to take the knockoff and taking away Mantine's leftovers and putting it almost at 50% health, which I'm okay with that. I am very much okay with that because I know Mantine can be a good wall. And I, you know, it's almost down now. It's almost there. So I'm feeling a little thorny. I'm going to bring my Ferrothorn back in because Power Whip hits it for neutral damage. And he went for the Toxic. Ferrothorn still typing protects it from that. So I kind of got a free turn there. He's going to switch it out. And I'm going to go ahead and set my Stealth Rocks up. But he brings in, I saw the nickname Zeus. I thought it was the Magnazone. I thought I kind of screwed myself here. Instead, it was the Tapu Lele putting up that stupid Psychic Terrain that protects it from priority moves. That terrain is just dumb. I don't care what you say. To me, that's too good of a terrain. Boosting its psychic, boosting its psychic attacks. Protecting, protecting it from Shadow Sneak. It's stupid. I'm going to protect. I'm going to kind of scout what he's trying to do here. He goes for the Focus Blast. And now I at least know I got an opening to bring in Mimikyu. Because most Tapu Lele's are Scarfed or Specs. You do see one holding a Z-Move or maybe an Assault Vest of some kind. Some kind of variant like that. But majority of the time, it's either Scarfed or Specs. And I was actually right. I believe this Tapu Lele was Scarfed. He goes for the Focus Blast. Not going to hurt Mimikyu because of its Ghost Typing. And I don't have a lot of experience with Mimikyu. Just what I've seen my opponents use on Showdown. So, you know, I figured it's pretty straightforward. Uh, this Mimikyu's nature is adamant for max attack. And putting the rest of the Eevees and Ivies into speed. The moveset is Swords Dance, uh, Shadow Sneak, Play Rough, and Shadow Claw. But it's holding the Ghost DMZ so I can do the, over the, the Nightmare, the Overwhelming Nightmare. Shadow Claw is going to come in and hit the Magnazone, putting it... At below 50% health, dealing, dealing a good amount of damage, but it does not take it out. And he's going to Volt Switch to break my disguise. So right here, I feel like I should have maybe gone for a second Swords Dance. Because then that would have just put my attack at stupid levels. And I still have that Scissor to worry about. So I, don't, I, I doubt a Shadow Snake would have taken it out. But I mean, maybe it would have put it at very low health. But that, that's on me. I had an opportunity for a second Swords Dance. I didn't go for it. It sucks. But, I mean, that was it's that's just the way it goes. He brings Hippodon back in, thinking that Hippodon is just going to wall this. Wall my Mimikyu. And I was actually think, thinking about it now. I'm surprised this thing, this Hippodon, doesn't know Roar. Because my Hippodon knew Roar to get rid of, you know, Pokemon that can set up like I'm doing. I'm setting up on it, and then Roar would just roar it away, negating the status effects and just kind of wasting my turn. And instead, he Earthquake, so I was very happy about that. Roar did not happen. But my Mimikyu is at pretty low health, even after that burn. You know, he just set it to a, just set it real low. And then the sand freaking buffing me in the face. It's not helping. But with the plus two attack... I'm thinking it's time to go for it. The burn's kind of, it's not as low as I want it to be, but I'm going to see what it's going to do because I got two swords dances up. I'm going to go for the Z move and see if I can finally take out this Hippodon and just get some momentum going here, take away a very annoying wall, and maybe my other Pokemon can just come in and start cleaning house. So going for the Z move, going for never ending nightmare. Sorry, I said overwhelming nightmare earlier. Oh, well, never ending nightmare. Putting it looking like a freaking something out of Full Metal Alchemist with the Hands of Truth coming in and blasting Hippodon into nothing. And Hippodon cannot take the truth. It can't handle the truth. It's out of the game. So I got rid of the Hippodon. That was one Pokemon that it was it was a Pokemon that needed to go. But he's gonna bring in his Scizor. And this is what I was worried about. Scizor is bulky. And Without the without the third sword dance, I don't I, actually. I think even with the third swords dance, I don't think Shadow Sneak would have KO'd this thing. Probably would have put it low, but there's no way it would have KO'd. At least I think so. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If you know I'm wrong, correct me in the comments. But I don't think it would have worked. I should have gone for the Shadow Sneak here just to get some extra damage on this thing, but I didn't. I went for the Shadow Claw and Bullet Punch is going to take out Mimikyu. So that's another mistake I made, but. You know, that sucks. I lost Mimikyu there, which Mimikyu is kind of a late game sweeper similar to Charizard. You want some of the bulky Pokemon that just threaten it out. 
And here's where he makes a play. I can't believe I didn't see this thing coming. I'm bringing in Megalopony. I'm going to go for the fake out, just get an extra turn. But as soon as he switched out Scizor, I realized what I did wrong. He brings in the Tapu Lele. And the Psychic Terrain kicks in to protect it from the fake out. This sucked. I should have seen this coming. I should have gone for the return or the Ice Punch. Anything but the fake out. And that Psychic Terrain just protected it from damage. So I'm kind of screwed here. I don't want to lose... I don't want to lose my Mega. I don't want to lose Lopunny. So I put in Greninja, hoping that the Focus Blast will just miss. Uh, the reason why I didn't... I knew he wouldn't go for... I, I actually should have known that Focus Blast was coming. I was, I was thinking he was going to go for Psychic or Psyshock. But, you know, having a Dark-type, I should have seen that coming. So Greninja cannot take that Focus Blast. And it hits and takes it out. So I'm kind of getting in a bad position here. Um, he's getting momentum and he's getting it fast. This Tapu Lele is a huge threat to my team. But I at least know that Landorus will resist the Focus Blast. So I'm going to see if I can maybe U-turn or knock off. I think I go for the U-turn. I go for the U-turn. That's right. I'm going to U-turn here just hoping to get some damage on the Tapu Lele. I don't think it would have taken it out. But at least I got some damage on it. I'm going to U-turn to put the Mantine in the red. And now I'm thinking I'm feeling a little... No, I'm not feeling thorny. <laughs> it's mega open. <laughs> I watch these videos so much to prepare for commentary, and then I just get so nervous I forget what I do. So I'm sorry, guys. Mega open, he goes in for the return to take out Mantine because it's in the red. Mantine cannot handle that. And goodbye, Mantine. Mantine is down. Hippodon is down. I don't got to worry about his walls. But I do still got to worry about this Tapu Lele because it's scarfed. I can't do anything to it. And I lost Mimikyu, so I cannot make that awesome play of switching in on the Focus Blast. But instead, he goes for the Moon Blast because I had nothing to bring in against that. And I got to let Lopini take it. I got to let her get out. So this Tapu Lele is just wrecking my team here. I got to do something about it and fast or else I'm going to lose. So because I know it's locked in on Moonblast, Heatran resists this thing with both the fire and steel types. I know that Moonblast is not going to do anything to this. Uh, I should have seen the switch coming, but I was thinking, hey, maybe he, want, he wants to let it you know, get knocked out and he wants to pop my balloon to get it ready. Instead, he goes for the Magnazone and... My flash cannon is not going to do anything to this Pokemon. So that sucks. I should have gone for the Lava Plume. I don't know why I didn't. I'm stupid. I'm not the best battler, as I've said. <laughs> so Volt Switch is going to come and pop Heatran's Balloon. Hey, that works on two level. <laughs> Popping Heatran's Balloon. So now he's grounded. Susceptible, susceptible to Earthquakes. And he brings back out Tapu Lele. Going for the Focus Blast to take out Heatran. So, this, uh, again, look at the damage that this Tapu Lele is doing to my entire team. Uh, I go for the Lava Plume. I don't know why I didn't just freaking go for the freaking Flash Cannon. Because I would have hit it for super effective damage and definitely would have taken it out. I'm going to switch out here knowing that the Focus Blast is coming. And I'm hoping that Landorus can just take it here. Because, you know, he resists it. It's a fighting. It's a fighting attack. I know Tapu Lele's special attack is some, is a force to be reckoned with. I know you got to watch out for it, but still, with the resistance clause, I'm hoping I can just take it. And the damage there kind of got me nervous, but only because it was a critical hit. So I at least took it. I'm not. I, I'm not down a Pokemon to where I can't take it out. He goes for the Focus Blast again and dodged up, dip, dive, dodge from Landorus. Oh shit! He uses U-turn to take out the Tapu Lele. And I caught a break there with that freaking Focus Blast missing. I caught a huge break there with that Focus Blast missing. Bringing Landers back to bring Heatran back in. Because Scizor is, is all that's left. Magnazone is all that's left. And I'm hoping I can just take out these last two remaining Pokemon. Uh, oh, and also he's got one more Pokemon left. I can't, I can't remember who it is for the life of me. You'll, you'll see here in a little bit. Going for the Lava Plume. Taking out the Scizor. I remember who it is now. It's that freaking Kyrum Black. Uh, which I'm surprised he didn't go for that to begin with. Instead, you know, he because he could have saved Scizor. So the Kyrum Black is going to come in. And with Milo Health, 
I know I can't take whatever's coming. I should have switched. I should have seen the freaking Terrible coming. Or not the Terrible, the, uh, the freaking attack it does. Jeez, man. You see, Fusion Bolt. I should have seen the Fusion Bolt coming, and I should have gone into Landorus to resist it. And that would have just gotten me a free turn there. So, but instead, I lose, I lose Heatran, and that sucks. Uh, but I do know, I don't think this thing is scarfed. And even if it is, it's stuck in a fusion bolt. So I'm going to bring Landers back in and see if Stealth Rocks can just take it out and put it down. So after the Intimidate, I'm going to go for the Stealth Rocks. Even if he switches, you know, Magnezone might still die because Magnezone's at pretty low health. So Stone Edge coming in. Tearing it up and getting a critical hit. I'm going to say that crit counted. And I also know I said Stealth Rocks, but you know I meant Stone Edge. <laughs> so the crit, I'm going to say that crit counted. I don't even care. The crit counted. Just to be safe, because I don't know if this Magnezone knows Hidden Power Ice or knows any kind of move that can take Landorus out. I'm, I don't want to be... I don't want to lose this. I'm going to switch out and go into Ferrothorn. And Ferrothorn is going to go ahead and finish the deed. Of taking out this magma zone and it turns out this magma zone was scarfed as well so volt switch is not going to do anything to ferrothorn and now he's locked into volt switch so that was a very good game against christ or christ or whatever but that was a close game a very close game a very good game and there's the power whip taking out the magma zone and again i want that I, I want that. La I want a, a status inducer of some kind. I'm leaning more towards Thunder Wave to slow Pokemon down from Mimikyu. But we'll cover that in a little bit. So that was the match with Chris. Moving on to the match with Fidelis. Looking at this team, the only thing I was scared of was the Cloister. I know Dragonite can be an awesome Pokemon, but Cloister is annoying. I hate Cloisters. Uh, because they're, I mean, just Skill Link. It's awesome. And then the Shell Smash... They're just an awesome Pokemon, and they are something you need to watch out for. So starting off with Lopany, he's going to start off with the Dragonite. And now I'm thinking, I'm not sure where this is going to go, because I know this thing probably has multi-scale, which lowers, uh, I think it lowers the damage of moves that, that hit super effectively if their health is full. So, but I can break the multi-scale with a fake out. But I also know that Dragon Dance's other abilities and her focus to keep it from feigning. So, I'm going for the fake out, and it flinches, meaning it probably has multi scale. I don't got to worry about the inner focus. Going with Ice Punch to hit Dragonite for times four damage and taking it out of the match early to where I got some momentum of this at turn two in the game. So, so far, so good. He's going for Sylveon, and I kind of got to get Lopany out of here. I don't want Hyper Voice to freaking tear her a new one because pixelate is a thing the only thing i can the only thing i can think to bring in is i started feeling a little thorny to go in with ferrothorn oh me so thorny <laughs> i'm a dork <laughs> hyper voice coming in to deal a good amount but not enough to, for me to be concerned with and he's going to switch out the sylveon to bring in Volcano, Volcarona, Volcanora, whatever the heck. And, okay, now I gotta get out of here. I cannot do anything to this Pokemon, and I don't want it to Quiver Dance and set up on me, because Ferrothorn is kind of set up fodder at this point. I'm not even gonna bother protecting. I need to get Ferrothorn out of here, because I do not want this thing to set up to the point where I cannot take it out. So I'm gonna switch out, and I'm gonna go into Heatran, because I know Heatran, you know, can, this thing can't really do much to Heatran. But Heatran can't really do much to Volcarona or Volcanora. And instead of going for the Quiver Dance, he goes for the Fiery Dance and Flash Fire procs to increase the damage my the damage my fire type moves do. So that was an awesome play on my part. Uh, I was actually very proud of that. Because I thought he was gonna go for the Quiver Dance, but I just wanted Heatran in there, you know, just to kind of force it out. And he withdraws and goes into his Mega Blastoise. And yeah, Heatran's not doing anything to this thing because Mega Blastoise is awesome. But I go for the Lava Plume anyway, hoping at least I get the burn. And, you know, I'm not disappointed at the damage it did, but I don't get the burn either. So now Heatran's got to come out and I got to bring back, uh, I got to bring Ferrothorn back in because I don't think Blastoise can do much to Ferrothorn. I do know that it learns 
Aurasphere, and with the ability it gets in its mega form, it increases the power of like water pulse, dark pulse, moves like that. So I'm thinking Aurasphere is going to come and just hopefully not take out Ferrothorn. Instead, he dark pulses, seeing the switch coming, and it does a crap ton of damage to where, yeah, I got to be concerned with this. Uh, he's going to dark pulse again to try and just wear Ferrothorn down. The only reason I kept it in was because I wanted to Power Whip and see what Power Whip did. I was hoping Power Whip would take it out. It doesn't take it out, but it puts it in the red. I should have maybe gone for the Leech Seed here just to, you know, get some health back because then I could have Leech Seeded to protect, slowly getting my health and slowly wearing it down. Uh, but I know, you know, Dark Pulse is coming. I know Lopany resists it thanks to her fight, the fighting type that she gets when she Mega Evolves. So not very effective on that Dark Pulse and Fake Out takes out the Mega Blastoise. So far, very good, very good for me. Uh, everything's tilting in my favor. Cloister is going to come in. It sucks because Cloisters, they hold a, a Focus Sash to where you can't Oko them. High Jump Kick missing. And there is the freaking tilt of the match. I told you that High Jump Kick could suck because when you miss, your Pokemon damages itself and you miss out a chance to freaking put a Cloister at one health. And it gets a shell, a shell smash off to raise its attack and special attack and speed. So I am in a bad position here. Icicle Spear to knock the crap out of Megalopony and take her out. And the thing with moves like Icicle Spear and Icicle Spear and Rock Blast on Cloister is the ability Skill Link, meaning it's. If it does move that attack one to five times, they will always attack five times. And it makes move, moves like Icicle Spear and Rock Blast stupid. And I did not think this through. I would not have put in Mimikyu if I just remembered about this. So the disguise got busted. And then it keeps on going to Icicle Spear to death. That's three and then four. So I'm out... Mimic you. I'm kind of starting to get nervous here. I'm actually kind of starting to get a little bit upset because I cannot believe I let this happen and that miss that high jump kick that missed just sucked. I'm bringing in Heatran and thinking, oh, he can't do much, but I forgot about Razor Shell <laughs> and Heatran cannot take this. So, yeah. Heatran's balloon was definitely popped there. <laughs> So I'm bringing in Landorus because I know, I'm thinking maybe I do outspeed this thing. Maybe even with the Choice Scarf, I can Stone Edge and put it at one health and then come in with Water Shoot again. But then I remembered that, you know, the uh, priority freaking ice move, I can't remember it. Instead, he Shell Smashes to, again, he gets greedy. And because he got greedy, that actually tilted the match back in for me. So, oh shit, he uses Stone Edge to knock the hell out of Cloyster and put it at one health, which is what I needed to happen. Because now Greninja can come in and water shoot again this thing to death. But I gotta feed this Cloyster something. I gotta give it a Pokemon to knock out. And Ferrothorn is already at low health, so I will feed it Ferrothorn. And Ferrothorn is going to get taken out by the Icicle Spear. And I still can, for the life of me, cannot think of that freaking priority. Ice, ice Shard. Jesus, there it is. Ice Shard. I knew I would get it. <laughs> ice Shard. Priority Ice move. I thought that was coming in on Landorus. It didn't. It does not know Ice Shard. Bringing in the Frokage of the Village Hidden in the Frogs. And going for the Water Shoot again to take out Cloyster. And finally getting my Ash Greninja. That was annoying and that is why i hate cloister you need to be careful with cloisters and that's also why entry hazards are so important because i should have set up my entry hazards instead of going for the power whip there on the blastoise i should have set up the entry hazards entry hazards are just too important and they would have gotten rid of that choice of that uh, focus sash so he's going to bring in his Ducidei, the uh starting the full evolution of the starting grass type 
I've never gone across this Pokemon. The only thing I know about it is it's grass and flying. So I don't know if it's a physical or a special attacker. It looks like a physical attacker just by the look of it. So I'm going to go into Landorus, lowering the attack. Lee played to tear Landorus a new one, but only because it got a critical hit. And I'm going to go for the Stone Edge here. Because I want, I know, you know, I know it's a flying type, so maybe Stone Edge will just take it out. But he switches back into Volcarona, Volcanora, whichever, and Stone Edge is going to take it out, not missing, thankfully, to put it out of the match. So this freaking match stressed the hell out of me. <laughs> Do CDI coming back in to? to try and take on Landorus. Going for the Sucker Punch, and at this point I thought I was screwed. But Landorus lives with two health to Stone Edge it, but it doesn't take it out. And that's because I did not have Intimidate on it, but I need to switch out. I'm thinking he's going to go for the Sucker Punch again. I don't want to freaking lose Lando. Switching back into Ash Greninja, and he did go for the Sucker Punch again to where I can now... Ice style, ice beam jutsu, taking new CDI out of the match. Wow. All he has left is that Sylveon. And I don't know if ice beam is going to take it out. Actually, I know for a fact it's not, but I want to put it at, you know, low enough damage to where Landorus can earthquake this thing and I can steal the win back here. So ice beam doing maybe 50% health. It's I, I can't really tell. I'm going to say that's 50%. It might be a little above it. But Hyper Voice, because of the Pixelate, making it a fairy move to take Ash Greninja out. But I know this thing does not outspeed Landorus. So bringing my Landorus that's at 2 health back in, and I'm going to go for the Earthquake and just hope that it takes the Sylveon out. So moment of truth here. Earthquake hitting Sylveon and taking it out of the match. Always play through your matches, guys. That is just proof. Never forfeit. Always play through your matches. That was a rough match. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching my battle. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe to my channel. And with that being said, I mentioned earlier choosing a status move for Ferrothorn. So I'm leaning more towards Thunder Wave, but Toxic is also a possibility. So I'd rather ask you guys, what do you think would be a better status move for Ferrothorn? Thunder Wave, or Toxic. Go ahead and comment and let me know. Thanks, guys.